Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Focal Length Challenge where we break down different focal lengths by shooting a variety of subjects. Today, we're going back to my home province of Newfoundland to my favorite spot, Cape Spear. I went to the extreme opposite end of focal lengths for the series and chose 600 millimeters, which I probably should have eased my way into that focal length. But here we are, this is a challenge, right? And a challenge it was. This is a series, a non-technical workshop series where we explore different focal lengths while shooting a variety of subjects. This is the Focal Length Challenge. Um, can you guess where I am right now? I'll give you one hint. Favorite place in the world. Oh my God, look at this. Okay, I'm out here for a reason today. I'm in Newfoundland, I've been visiting my family. It's been like a family only trip, but I go home tomorrow and I thought I'd come out and shoot a focal length challenge video. But here's the thing. I've decided today I'm gonna do 600 millimeters and I've been shooting photos for 18 years and I feel like I don't know what to do. Like I'm overwhelmed because I don't see in telephoto. So this should be an interesting challenge. I'm seeing a couple pictures already. But I am a little bit overwhelmed because I'm not really sure how to shoot telephoto. You're gonna see me struggle today because this is actually gonna be a very real challenge. Not only shooting 600 millimeters, but also I don't know how to shoot 600 millimeters. So I feel like I'm starting over, but I think we picked a pretty perfect place. We'll see what we get. I'm actually, I'm actually gonna go down there because I think that there's a better shot down there. The sun is coming out, so I'm really hoping the sun goes away. By the way, that's my mom right there. I convinced her to come with me early in the morning. I'm trying to get an interesting shot of the lighthouse up there. It's not quite working out the way I want it to, so I'm gonna try again, but the waves are crashing over here and are pretty intense, so I'm gonna go and try to get a couple of wave shots. Um, and then there's some mist forming. Holy shit, massive wave just came right up in the air. We're gonna shoot that now, I think. Oopsies. The thing about this lens is that everything is super tight, so it's really hard to get a good idea of what's happening, so I think I might try and shoot some panoramas later to get like a bit more of a wider field of view from a really tight shot, but we're going to shoot this first. Wow. It's so tight. It almost has to be abstract, it's so close, so it's a bit of a struggle. I'm not really that good when somebody is not in the frame. This is just really difficult. Can you hear it? It's like thunder. Okay, I'm really struggling here. Uh, this is very difficult. I'm gonna try to do a portrait panorama of the cliff face there, because I just cannot get enough in the frame. I'm not used to shooting this close. It, you can tell I'm getting a little bit frustrated. Uh, I don't know. We'll try this and see how it goes. I'm gonna film this to give you an idea of what this looks like through a wide lens. So I just shot a big panorama of right here. I haven't done a lot of panoramas, especially not with a 600 millimeter lens. It's really tight, as I mentioned. Now I'm shooting on a full frame camera, so it would be even more telephoto if I was shooting on this camera, which is an APS-C crop body camera, 1.6 crop factor. So 1.6 times 600 is the focal length for an APS-C camera. I think before I leave, I'm definitely gonna have to shoot a couple with the 24 millimeter because it's just too insane here not to. I'm shooting at F20 to try to get everything in focus. 600, you're getting a lot of compression. Then I gotta flip it around and shoot that there. Man, I miss this landscape so much. I can't believe like this is where I'm shooting today. Okay. I wanna go for some long exposures, but I don't have an ND that's 95 millimeters. <laughs> All right, we're gonna try another panorama. I have no idea if this is gonna work out. Um, you will be seeing it as I'm seeing it. F10. When you're shooting telephoto, you wanna make sure that your shutter speed is at least whatever your longest focal length is. So at 600, I probably wanna shoot at least one 600th of a second. I'm tripoded, but any kind of shake is magn magnified because of the length of the lens. We're gonna do a manual focus, and then we're gonna leave it, leave the focus point set and then run the, run the panel from there, and then we'll just see if it works. You're watching real life struggles of a person who's been shooting photos for 18 years who feels like they're starting from scratch. It's just too tight. No idea. But there is some low lying, low lying fog over on the rocks, so I'm just gonna shoot that way. I really gotta be careful about how much I'm shooting. I only got like a thousand pictures left. 
I'm out of breath. My mom's my assistant today, so she's holding my tripod. You're the best. <laughs> my uncle just told me there's fox up here. It'd be great to see one. Well, it's the oldest surviving lighthouse in Newfoundland. It was built in 1836, and uh, modern equipment was installed in 1912, and remains in the concrete tower built nearby in 1955, which is down there. It's amazing, a lot of history here, isn't it? Beauty. It's like I'm not even being dramatic. I don't even think I got one picture. It's really hard when you're not used to shooting a certain style. It's a challenge. I guess that's why this video series is called The Challenge. We're finished up here at Cape Spear today. Uh, this is the most easterly point in North America. I love coming out here because uh, there's such a variety of things you can shoot waves, cliffs, there's bunkers down here that which we didn't go to in today's video, and of course the lighthouses. You have to be very careful when you come to a place like this. Newfoundland uh, cliffs are no joke. They've taken lives. I've seen people come out here and go down into the rocks thinking that they're somewhere that's uh, a little less uh, volatile, but if you come to Newfoundland, you come to Cape Spear, please listen to the signs and do not go far into the rocks. Keep on the trails. People have died here. With that said, it's been fun shooting here. As you guys know, this is uh, part of a ongoing series called the Focal Length Challenge where I challenge myself to shoot one focal length at a location. We film it, show you guys, and show you the photos and the experience. Up until this point, it's been really fun and challenging, but kind of on the easier side because I've done 16, 24, and 50 millimeters, which are my three favorite focal lengths. So today I went to the opposite length. I went to 600 millimeters, which is not um, normally something that I shoot. I don't see in telephoto. When I come to a place like this, I see these wide sweeping, uh, wide angle landscape shots of cliffs and water and, and long exposures. So when I come in at 600 millimeters, it's like so tight in telephoto that I really don't know what to shoot. I can't see that way. So what you guys saw today was me struggling. Today was fun. It was a good challenge. We'll see if I got any pictures. I'm walking away from the shoot today thinking that I, I'm pretty sure I don't have a shot. I may have one picture. We'll see if it stitches together. I did find myself, you know, shooting with the 600 and then sneaking my 24 on for a couple of shots. You're seeing these photos before I've seen them at the time of shooting. So hopefully we got something, but the conditions are amazing today. Look how dark the sky is. Literally couldn't have asked for a better day for this. And it was supposed to rain all day and it didn't. I wore my raincoat, it didn't even need to. Okay, I'm heading back to Buffalo uh, tomorrow. We'll head back to the studio. 600 millimeters is a pretty niche focal length. Unless you're into shooting wildlife and birds, this is probably not gonna be a focal length that you're gonna add to your kit if you're just starting out, unless you wanna be a wildlife photographer. But I did pick up this lens because I did wanna shoot some wildlife. During the shoot, obviously you could probably tell, I found myself getting extremely frustrated because I'm used to shooting wider focal lengths. So 600, I just wasn't seeing what I normally see when I'm going out for a shoot. So here's an example of what a wide shot would look like on a 24 millimeter lens, which is one of my favorite focal lengths. And then here is a similar shot stood at a similar place at 600 millimeters. So there's a massive difference in the way that looks. You're seeing like flat close up details of houses with the 600 and you're seeing that wide landscape shot with all of the information in the shot with 24 millimeters. So 24 is how I see the world basically. 600, not so much because I'm not used to shooting it. So when you're shooting so telephoto, like 600 millimeters, you have to be a little bit strategic about how and what you're shooting. 600 millimeters is so tight, you're really only getting a snippet of a place that you're shooting. If you wanna capture wide landscape, you either have to go for a wider focal length or strategically shoot panoramas with a 600 millimeter. And that's really the only way to kind of get these big sweeping landscapes is by shooting panoramas with 600 or else you're just getting a very zoomed in portion of the place that you're shooting. Unless the place that you're shooting is actually really far away and then in which case the 600 is probably fine and you probably don't need to shoot a panorama. So yeah, this focal length is great for getting tight details of things that are far away or even things that are kind of close up. You can actually use the lens sort of as a macro lens to get these close up detail shots, which is super fun and makes 600 a little bit more versatile. When I was at Cape Spear, I did find myself getting frustrated because I wasn't getting enough in the shot. When I went there, I saw these huge waves, cliffs, 
and I wanted to shoot wide shots, but at 600, we're really zoomed in. So I decided to shoot a panorama of what I was seeing to capture more in the shot. So this shot here is actually 12 images shot, portrait style and stitched together. When you're doing a panorama like that and you're not using a panoramic head, you're just kind of doing it kind of by eye. You wanna make sure that you're overlapping your shot a lot to make sure that your stitch actually works. And I just stitched this in Lightroom, opened it up in Photoshop, and just filled in a couple of the edges where the rocks were missing. Like I mentioned, this focal length is great for getting tight shots of far away things and tight shots of close up things. And it's almost to a level of abstract photography in a way because it is so close. So 600 millimeters can be a really fun and interesting lens to shoot people with if they're far away in a landscape where you can kind of use compression to make the background look large. But 600 is not good for portraits. Because of said compression, we made a video kind of about this, it's a little bit of a myth, but it's the best way to explain it. Because of that flatness and the 600 kind of makes the background look larger, when you're shooting a portrait, it makes a face look really flat and square, and it's not the most flattering look. The same way we talked about 16 millimeters not being so great for that close-up headshot because it's so distorted on the face. 600 is the same except for it's flatter and not flattering. You know, you're doing portraits, headshots, 50 millimeters is kind of, in my opinion, the best for that kind of stuff. Link up here. So I feel like animals should fit into the people category. People, animals, they're like living things. So 600 millimeters, as I mentioned, ideal for wildlife. If the wildlife is close, you're gonna be able to get kind of like a portrait, kind of like what I got of this fox here, which was pretty close to me, getting depth of field. Even though you're shooting at like f6.3, f8, f11, you're still getting shallow depth of field because the lens is so long that the things in the background and the foreground become out of focus. So I've used this lens to take uh, some of my favorite wildlife shots I've ever taken. Um, and not only is it good for zooming in on larger animals, but it's also cool to get close-up shots of smaller animals, like this frog. This frog was probably, what, like three inches long? And I was pretty close to it, probably at the minimum focus distance that that lens would focus. Um, but I was able to get this kind of cool shot of the frog, and it's just details for days. Don't forget that you don't have to shoot far away things with the 600. You can shoot close-up things as well. Birds is also not something I'm overly used to shooting, but I did get an opportunity to shoot this photo of this female cardinal, which are my favorite birds. I love the colors of them and their bright pinkish orange beaks and their gray bodies with their little bit of pink on them. I think they're so cute. I'm really happy with that, how that one turned out. In my experience, I have had more positive results shooting wildlife with a 600 millimeter than I have shooting landscapes with a 600 millimeter. But probably because I'm not used to it. So like I mentioned earlier, when you're shooting 600 millimeters, you almost have to go in with a strategy and kind of a list of of ways and things that you can shoot in a creative way. Panoramas, long exposures, close-up detail shots, using compression to make things appear larger, the shot of the sunrise. It's not a great shot, but I threw it in here just to give you an example. You know how small the sun is when it's coming up over the horizon? Well, this was shot at 600 millimeters right over the ocean and I was able to get the sun quite large in the shot. And of course, seeing smaller things and getting close up to them, you can get a pretty cool detail style shot of plants, flowers, animals still. Kind of like this shot that I took of this like grass on the side of the hill. It's a pretty close up shot for 600 millimeters. There's a fence in the foreground shooting through the fence and that fence is creamed out. The depth of field kind of just falls off right beyond the tree there. So it's kind of an interesting type of shot that you wouldn't expect to get with a long telephoto lens like 600 millimeters. And you could also shoot textures with this lens as well. I mentioned abstract photography, this is great for that. Getting close up detail shots of textures like rain falling in water, waves. These are great things to have on hand as stock images in case you want to use them as backgrounds. So yeah, I really struggled with 600 millimeters. I felt like I was starting from scratch. I didn't really know what to shoot or where to point the lens. All I was seeing was shots at 16 millimeters and 24 millimeters, and I didn't see anything at 600 millimeters. So I really had to pull out all the stops to try to get a couple of images during this shoot using some of the more technical techniques, if you will. Uh, like shooting panorama, that's not something I often do, but in this case, I broke out that skill to get a shot that I was happy with. But it was a good exercise. I was able to push myself and I had fun and I ended up coming away with a couple of shots that 
I was happy with, stuff that I wouldn't normally shoot, but sometimes it's really good to get out there and try a different style. It's 100% a challenge. If you guys are interested in joining a community of other photographers of all levels, we run a Facebook group called Pixel and Lens. It's kind of like a photo club slash video club where community members will post questions and community members will answer questions and help people out with their tech issues. We also have show and tell threads where you can share your images, video share threads where you can share your latest video. And of course we encourage the community to go back and look at other people's work, comment on it. And uh, every now and then we have critique threads as well. Uh, if you want to join it, I will link it in the description box. It is called Pixel and Lens Visuals Club. You probably heard me talk about it a million times. Thank you so much for watching and uh, we'll see what we end up doing on the next one. Who knows? Definitely something easier than 600 millimeters.